Welcome back, Airbnb family. So today, let's talk about our calendar and some specifics and some terminology and bringing up to speed on some techniques. This one is about orphan days. So what are orphan days? Um, essentially, the short answer for you in a hurry is orphan days are any days that are left behind due to unoptimal booking. So for example, let's say you have a reservation where somebody books Thursday through Monday, and then Tuesday goes unbooked, and then somebody books Wednesday through Monday again. That Tuesday is your orphan day. So what this does is it puts you kind of in a hard spot because of course you maximize your income when you have 100% occupancy. And of course you'd also like all of your days to be booked at full rate. Um, that's how you make the most money. So the problem with orphan days is they will either go unbooked or you will collect a small amount of money for them. So let me go into my calendar and show you kind of how I handle orphan days and we'll, um, We'll hopefully teach you something fun. So, by the way, guys, I'm showing you my my multi calendar here in a screencast. Some of you have said that you've had a hard time finding this section of your Airbnb uh, dashboard on a computer. So, I'd like to know um, in in the comments, please tell me, can you find a multi calendar and how many listings do you have? I've got this creeping feeling that the multi calendar is only available to hosts with a certain number of listings, uh, just like the custom pricing setting, the two day. The pricing strategy that I use, some people don't have access to custom length pricing. And so Airbnb told one person that you need to have at least five listings. So uh, let's figure this out. Let me know if you have the multi-calendar available and how many listings you have. But anyway, let's jump into my screencast now. Here we go. Okay, so um, today is the 22nd of March and you see that's all the way to the right. Um, if you look at all the past reservations that I have since Tuesday the 6th on here, that I've got looks like six days unbooked. Those are my orphan days. What I want to draw your attention to are a couple of my larger properties and how much I normally charge and what I actually drop them down to. So let's go to the eighth, eighth which is Thursday. Um, if you go down to the, the one that's marked $80 right here, that is not my normal rate, obviously. What the multi-calendar does is it shows you your last listed Right, and I can actually change it right now, even though it's in the past. It's kind of weird how the functionality works. But what you'll notice is the day after we've got this guy Mike here. Let's pop Mike open. Uh, for one night, he paid four hundred seventy-five dollars. That is my single night rate for Friday. Now, Mike booked in advance, and so what happened is Mike's reservation made it impossible for somebody to book from the eighth to the fifteenth or something like that. So. What I did is, you know, a few days before the 8th, I started to drop my prices. The day of Thursday the 8th, my final price that I dropped it down to was $80, and I still didn't get booked. So this is the danger of an orphan day. You may not get it booked, and you lose that money. But I took a, a unit that I normally have listed at, like $420 a night plus cleaning fees, and I dropped it all the way down to 80 to hope to get it booked. It doesn't always work, but sometimes it does. Like, for example, you'll see Kevin down here, um, Kevin, his total price for his reservation was 80, right? With cleaning fees um, and everything else, so that means my nightly rate was somewhere around 50 for that one booking. Where the following night, uh, Abina paid 114, right, for her Friday reservation, um, and you know, etc. So sometimes you lower your rate a little bit, you get booked. Um, let's go back up to after Mike here, this 475 dollars one. The next one was for three nights, and they paid 582. What happened is this one was also unbooked till about a week out, and what I did is I lowered the average nightly rate down to about 175 a night, and it got booked. So this, um, you can call this price discrimination, where you're charging a premium for those willing to pay it, and then when you find out that nobody's willing to pay your premium, you start to drop your price and offer it at a lower rate. Um, a lot of my clients are major newspapers, like um, Hearst Corporation, Cox Media Group, for my uh, original company that I founded 10 years ago, and they practice price discrimination um, as one of their main um, revenue uh, management uh, strategies. So use it. So now that you understand the concept of a orphan day and how it's kind of affected my past dates, let's go to what my future bookings look like and how I'm handling those in the future. So let's scroll right here and make it so that way our Thursday the 2nd or 22nd, which is today, is now at the beginning of our, of our list here. Okay, so I also have a touch screen. Let's see if this actually helps. There we go. Okay, cool. So now uh, what we have is today I've got a couple uh, dates open. Um, this uh, gallery of five bed is actually, see, you notice the regular rate on the 24th is 300. 
Um, but in the future, my weekend rate is 38, 380. So what I've done is I've already dropped my rates down. And so for today, I've already dropped it down to 90, and hopefully I'm gonna get it booked for 90 plus the cleaning fee. Um, I've got another two bedroom that's got two single kings in each room, and I've got it listed for 120, but it's afternoon, so I'm actually gonna drop this down to 80 plus cleaning fee for that one, and let's hope that it gets booked. Now, what I consider orphan days is anything shorter than a week, because my pricing strategy I have this hyper premium rate for single night stays and then do a discount for two days and then I do uh, discounts down to a week and I bought it a week long stay is where my rates are competitive. So they're competitive at one week. What this means though is when Rachel up here booked for the 276, she made it impossible for somebody starting the 25th to book for a week, right? So nobody can achieve my competitive one week rate. So this actually orphans those five days. So you'll notice here that I've dropped Sunday down to $100, um, and then Monday through uh, Thursday are at 126. But if you look, Monday, Tuesday over here is 130. So you see how I dropped them just a little bit? So now, as we get closer, uh, probably on, on actually, on, actually let's do it right now. Um, Monday and Tuesday would be the next ones I drop because they're within a week from now. So I'm actually gonna drop these down to 110, right? Um, this will take the average nightly rate for a five-day stay and make it competitive. I'm hoping to get somebody to book from Sunday through Thursday if I can. Um, so I'm not going to drop all my rates down because really what you're doing is you're playing with your average nightly rate. Um, you you want to collect as much money as possible. So now you have to speculate if somebody's going to book these dates, what would they book them for? How far out are we? What kind of occupancy um, availability do you have? And every uh, city's different, so this is something that you're going to have to look at your own calendar, past bookings, and kind of extrapolate what you can charge. Um, so I have another one right here. So this girl, Alexis, actually just recently booked, which orphaned these five days here. So now I have to do the same thing. This is a one-bedroom apartment, and so I'm going to drop down um, this one down to, uh, let's say, 95. What I'm doing is real, I'm really like deducting the cost of the cleaning fee plus a little bit um, because that first night here is the hardest one to book. And let me tell you why. Um, when people are searching for stays, let's say they're searching for a three night stay, they could find it if they searched like this, right? For these nights, they'll find it. But the problem is, is let's say somebody wanted to arrive on Saturday. They can't search for three nights on Saturday and book this Sunday. So the only time Sunday gets booked is if somebody's looking for a single night on Sunday, a two night Sunday, Monday, or three night Sunday through Tuesday, they actually have to search for an arrival date of Sunday specifically to get that date booked. And that makes this, this date so much harder to book. And that's why single night orphan stays usually go unbooked. That's where you are. So whenever you have your orphan days, if you follow my strategy where orphan days could actually be a few days in a row, that first date is the hardest one to book. So that's the date that you discount. Um, you're only gonna discount lightly the rest of these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna discount these down to 120, but leave the first day at 95. That way, I'm, I'm really hoping that somebody who searches for an arrival of Sunday finds a little extra premium because they drop that one day down and they'll book Sunday through Wednesday or something like that. And um, that extra discount on the Sunday one is what encouraged the booking. What'll happen though in an alternate universe here is that somebody will book Sunday only and pay Sunday plus the cleaning fee, right? So that's the $95 plus the cleaning fee, which is right around 120. So the final rate is the same as what the average nightly rate will be. So, and this way you're starting to pick up your single nights last minute. Um, anytime that you see uh, enough, of, enough days in a row that you no longer consider them orphan days, you're going to change your pricing strategy. So um, you're, you're dropping your, your, date, your prices for your orphan days up to two weeks out, right? Or if you see a single night availability, um, even a month from now, and you have a one night orphan day, drop the rate, right? Just drop it right away because you know you're gonna have to drop it to get it filled. So, when you have orphan days, drop the prices fast, right? Get them kind of to the price average. Um, and you're really doing this against your custom nightly discounts, right? So that way people can achieve your competitive rate. Now, if you have a bunch of dates open, like let's look at the bottom, the best of the Midtown right here, all these dates here, these, this, is, this is not orphaned, right? This is more than seven days. That's like nine. I'm not gonna drop my rate on these because somebody can find a week-long stay and they can achieve it, so I don't need to get um, you know aggressive in my discounting because these don't qualify for me. What I will do though is you know today's the 25th, a uh, 22nd, and Thursday's the 27th. So Thursday or this is Tuesday, so this is a weekday, um, and it's within a week from now. So I'm going to drop the first date because remember the first date after a reservation is the hardest one to fill. 
So I am going to drop this one down to about 105. So I'm going to cost average out a little bit of the cleaning fee for somebody starting their reservation on Tuesday. Um, that is how I handle those, those day after reservation um, um, prices. And that's really the only thing you should really consider if the dates aren't. Hey guys, I hope you like that. Um, if you have any questions on this, uh, feel free, of course, to leave it in the comments as per usual. Um, this is just one of a few tools that you should use to manage your pricing um, and, of course, maximize your occupancy. So um, I wish you much success with your multi-calendar management. And thank you for watching Airbnb Automated. I will see you on the other side.